we should be live. Cool. Hi, everyone. This is uh, Chicho, and we're in May 3rd, 2019. And this is Drop in Math Tutoring Session number 26. And I initially started titling these, let's do some math, open discussion. So we're going to keep in sort of track of how many we've done, and we're going to continue doing these. Hopefully, we'll end up doing these uh, once a week until the end of the school year, which is end of June in my part of the world anyway. Okay. Um, so that's what we're here to do. Uh, and it is an open discussion. Sometimes we don't get too many math questions. Sometimes we go off on physics questions and biology and astronomy and astrology even and politics economics and whatnot but math takes front stage if there's any thing that we're talking about during this live stream um, that is not math related and if you have a math question post a question and uh, we'll do our best to deal with your question and help you out if we can um, and there's a lot of people well there's some people that show up here that know a fair bit of mathematics their mathematics is more powerful than mine uh, especially in regards to calculus and statistics and some other things as well right and we're getting the sun peeking out so hopefully we won't get whited out on the board here we might we'll see we have a sort of a what do you call it uh, skylight where the sun shines through okay and we're definitely going to keep this nice and chill We'll see where we end up with these discussions. And tomorrow morning from 8 a.m. until 10 p.m., we're talking, doing a live stream on current events. If you're, uh, if that is what you are interested in. Okay, so if there's some politics, economic stuff that show up today in the chat, uh, and uh, they're a little deep, we might deal with them tomorrow. Uh, if they're quick or whatnot, and if there's no math questions, we might talk about them. And if there's no math questions, I do have some stuff we could talk about. Uh, and just to let you know, I'm going to start creating, uh, if you're interested in mathematics, I'm going to be starting to create some content regarding early education, specifically in regards to mathematics. Uh, for some reason, well, it just goes through waves. I go through waves and stuff. And I'm getting some requests uh, both online and in my daily activity from people to do some early preliminary uh, sort of the introduction to mathematics how to how to do some simple stuff such as counting and adding subtracting multiplying dividing and stuff like this um, but teaching it to people that aren't necessarily have entered high school yet or they might have entered high school many, many moons ago and they haven't done mathematics for a long time and they want to learn mathematics, do mathematics. And uh, I've been getting some requests from parents to create content to help them homeschool, educate, or supplement their kids' education in regards to mathematics at home. Okay, so I'm going to start creating some content on that front as well. Okay, aside from that, uh, I'm not sure how busy it's going to be today. It is Friday afternoon, my my part of the world. <laughs> Evening for some, early morning for others, I guess, or early Saturday morning for others. So we'll see where, where we end up going. Spider, how are you doing? Hey, Chicho, so happy to be here. Excited for the math today. Me too. I'm I'm doing a fair bit of math. Like um, because we're coming to the end of the end of the school year. There's uh, Caldine, how are you doing? Hannah, how are you doing? Long division of equations. Long division of poly a polynomial equations. Sure, let's do um, long division of two polynomials. Okay, let's do it. Um, the thing with uh, mathematics at the end of the school year, usually uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, anyway, in Canada, I start getting uh, more busy with students rolling in or doubling up on lessons and stuff like this because we're covering the whole school year right we sort of start review if the kids are up for it early on uh, and cover a little bit more and maybe sometimes try to uh, prep them for the following years to come right so that's sort of what i'm kicking myself into the mode of 
so I might start actually most likely I will I do need to create some content to send to my students um, so I'm, the odds are I'm going to be starting creating some additional ASMR math videos specifically for preliminary mathematics learning counting and adding subtracting and stuff like this right dividing long division of polynomial equations okay let's go down this rabbit hole let's go down this rabbit hole now check this out the types of questions you get are basically this i'm going to take this off so i don't get dizzy okay um basically what hannah is asking is along this these lines right x squared plus 5x plus 6 divided by x plus 1 right and this guy up top is a polynomial expression and this guy is up in the bottom is a polynomial expression or polynomial function polynomial function it really depends how you write it out right if uh, if I have three cookies and you take two what what do you have I got two <laughs> hmm I have a math uh, question how many squares make a circle um, infinite right it has to be infinite Hannah we'll take a little deviation right here's a circle how many squares can you fit in here well take it on the limit on one side okay I know it's the lighting it's the it's the skylight hitting me I got one black eye so if we just do one square we have a lot of gaps right empty 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 right so let's do another square right? fill it up right? and it doesn't say your question uh, how many squares make a circle so you didn't specify what size of squares and you couldn't right if you did then there would be a limit because you couldn't go smaller than a certain size right so we still have empty spaces so we could just do another square another square I guess another square and you keep on going like this right and what you're gonna find out is you're gonna be hitting the edges okay and no matter how small you get if you zoom into this area if you have multiple squares no matter how small you get here's the edge of the circle you're still gonna have empty spaces right and if you zoom in here again zoom it in you could go smaller squares but you're always gonna have empty squares so it's infinite okay it was a trick question squares can't make a circle he's a witch, he's a witch. <laughs> it's 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 a legitimate question but the answer is infinite you would be going forever doing this right no that's the punchline of the cookie joke you you have a black eye if you take my cookies off. <laughs> okay again I thought the lighting shows me as a black eye you have a black eye with the cookies well how about if you if we decide to take one and a half each how about if there's three cookies three people come in and each person gets one cookie okay ah, man. magic confuses me so take a look at this polynomials and by the way what's going on here just so you know okay this guy here you could think of as a function f of x x squared plus 5x plus 6 and this guy here is a linear function which is a line which is equal to x plus 1 okay so this guy graphs a parabola the f of x this guy graphs a parabola that looks like this okay and this guy graphs a line h of x that looks like uh sorry y intercept the one and goes like this that's this guy that's that guy right so we're taking a polynomial dividing by a line and we'll dig into this and uh, once we go through the mechanics of it the syntax of it uh, i'll show you what this all means right maybe a couple more concepts i never understood long division in school no matter how much it was taught to me i was asking mainly because uh curiosity kill the cat cat being me haha <laughs> but in an in all seriousness long divisions always confuse me i mean be it with polynomials or just two integers thanks for uh we'll do integers side by side 
Okay, so take a look at this. I'm going to erase this. So we want to do, oops, here, we'll write it again and we'll do mirror integers and polynomials. Okay, so we got x squared plus 5x plus 6 divided by x plus 1. And let's say on this side we have integers. Okay, let's draw this. On this side we have 27 divided by 2. Okay, easy. Chicho. Sorry to get off topic, but I'm curious. Uh, would you say teaching in the U.S. Uh, is better, worse, or about the same in Canada? Um, uh, it depends which side you're coming from. If you're a student, uh, education system in the U.S. is worse. High school education in the U.S. is worse than Canada. 15, 20 years ago, it was much worse than Canada, right? But Canada's education system has been collapsing. They're sort of integrating two systems, right? So Canada's education system has collapsed in the last 15 years. So Canada's education right now is equivalent to US high school education like 15 years ago. It's it really bad, right? Uh, in the United States, is horrendous, okay? And Canada's horrendous as far as I'm concerned as well. In regards to being a teacher, teaching in the United States or Canada I don't know I'm not I don't function in a centralized education system but I know in Canada uh, the really good teachers that my students have had they take a lot of mental health days some have some have, have had nervous breakdowns and some have quit so there's less uh, the ratio of good teachers to bad is much lower right so there's way less good teachers now than there was in the past uh, the centralized education system is collapsing private education is picking up there's a lot going on there's a lot going on we're asking real questions here like how many uh, licks does it take to get to the center of the tootsie oh i'll set three licks everything in math class i get a ball <laughs> so check this out we want to do long division right Let's do this guy first, integers. So the way you lay, set up your long division is this, two, 27, okay? So we're gonna mirror it here. So you know how this is playing out, right? So we have 27 divided by two. So we set it up like this and that's the division symbol. Do the same here. X plus one, X squared plus five X plus six. Hopefully that's big enough that you guys see it. Yeah, it should be good. No, sorry, I can't do the fundamental theorem calculus. I'm not teaching calculus right now. Okay. So first question you're gonna ask yourself when you're doing long division is this. Does two go into two? And if it goes into two, how many times does two go into two? First question, so you're always dealing with the leading number. Okay, so how many times does two go into two? And the answer is one. So you put one up here, okay? And what you do, this is just an algorithm, right? You take this, multiply by this, and put the answer here. So 1 times 2 is 2. So you put the 2 here, and you subtract this guy from that guy. Okay. So let me erase these guys so it doesn't get overwhelming. So we got this. So 1 times 2 is equal to 2. And whatever you put here, you're subtracting from the top guy, right? So 2 minus 2 is 0. Okay. Let's do the same here. You ask yourself, what do you multiply x by to give you x squared? Same, same method, right? What do you multiply 2 by to give you 2? 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Boop, boop. You get 0. What do you multiply x by to give you x squared? Because what you want to do... You want to start eliminating these first leading numbers if you can or you can get as close as you can right so you multiply x by x to give you x squared so we put x up here and x multiplies this and it multiplies that it multiplies everything here it multiplies all these guys in the bottom right and you lay them down here and then you subtract whatever's here from the top so you go x times x is x squared 
and x times 1 is 1x, right? Plus 1. Okay. And just like here, you subtract whatever is here from the top. You're going to subtract whatever is here from the top. So we're going to subtract this whole thing from there. And the way you think about it is this. When you're subtracting this whole thing, this is all in brackets, right? So this is x squared minus x squared and 5x minus, oh, sorry, this should be an x. My bad. What's x times 1 is x, right? You put that in bracket. So 5x minus x is going to be 4x. Now, I don't like this bracket deal, right? I don't appreciate it, okay? So what you do is, what I do is, I do this multiplication, lay it out here, and then I change these signs and add these guys. So this is positive x squared. This becomes minus, and that's positive x. So I'm just going to change it to a negative and add. Because sometimes you end up getting negative numbers. I don't want to deal with negative minus a negative. Okay? So what I end up doing is just changing the signs and adding them. It's less confusing. So x squared plus negative x squared is 0. And 5x minus x is 4x. Okay? Let me just read a couple of chats just in case I made some mistakes here. People will point them out for me. No, I'm not teaching calculus, brother. Or sister, of course, right? You want the integration. I'm not doing calculus right now. Narnia. 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 Well, algebra. Now I can at least pretend like I can follow what you're saying. Hey, Chicho. Hey, Nicholas. How are you doing? Oh, are you hyped for some mathematics? <laughs> nice, Chicho. You're an earth wizard. Can you prove the earth is round? Uh, it's easy to prove and it's not it's it's spherical it's it's not perfect circle of course right all you got to do is look at a ship coming over the ocean and if you see the sail coming up you know it's curved right college and study really hard you can learn all of this for two to three years and then completely empty it from your brain well it depends if you want to empty it i don't know if you want to empty it brother this stuff comes in handy. I'll show you how it comes in handy. Okay. So right now we have this. Right? So you're always asking yourself, what do you multiply this by to get rid of this? What do you multiply this by now to get rid of this? If you don't have, now over here, let's jump to here. So we're doing both going here to here, right? So right now this is what we've got. Now, in general, you don't put down your zero, right? I don't put down the zero. If it kills each other, you just knock it off. So I'm just going to knock these guys off, right? And we've got 4x down here. Now, what you do when you get to the next line, bring everything down. You do it over there, you do it over here. So I'm going to bring the 7 down, okay? And I'm going to bring the plus 6 down. Now you ask yourself, what do you multiply x by to give you 4x, okay? And what you multiply x by to give you 4x is 4, right? It's like asking yourself, what do you multiply 2 by to give you 7? Well, the closest you can get to 7 is 6 with a 2. So you're going to, in here, you're going to multiply the 2 by 3. 3 multiplies the 2 and comes down here. That becomes a 6. You subtract these, you get a 1. Got that so far? Over here, what do we multiply x by to give you 4x? You multiply by 4, and it's a positive 4. So you're going to go plus 4. 4 times x is 4x, 4 times 1 is plus 4, okay? And then you subtract this whole thing from that. It's like subtracting 6 from 7. Now, it's minus brackets this whole thing. I don't like doing it that way. All I do is, I like adding better than subtracting. I change the signs and add them. So this is minus, and this guy is minus. And usually when I'm doing it with when it's not on a whiteboard I just cross this out and just go minus right on a pen and paper or pencil and paper right so when you add these guys 4x minus 4x they kill each other 6 minus 4 is 2 okay that's where we are right now now 
what do you multiply 2 by to give you 1? Now, once you reach a point where this doesn't go into this, this number is smaller than this, you're done with the long division, if you like. You can put decimals in, we will, but if we're doing polynomials, you don't put decimals in, right? So over here, you can't really multiply 2 by any integer to give you 1. So we're going to pause there. We're going to stop there for now. Over here, you ask yourself, what do you multiply x by to give you 2? Well, this doesn't have any more x's. Once you don't have any more x's, you have to stop as well. Okay. And the way you express these things now, I'm going to sh show you how we can express them. Okay. Because as soon as you reach a point where this number doesn't have any of these numbers in it, okay, you stop. So 2 doesn't have any x's, you stop. 1 is smaller than 2, so you can't really multiply by 2 by an integer to give you 1. This is what you end up getting, okay? And this is called the division statement to a certain degree. When we have this, what you can write is this. 27 divided by 2 is equal to 13 plus 1 over 2. Okay. 13 plus 1. Two. 1 over 2. Right? And if you're going to do this, if you're going to add fractions here, if you want to take a look at it, that's over 1. Common denominator is 2. You multiply that by 2. 13 by 2 is 26 plus 1. That gives you back 27 over 2. So what you've really done is rewrite rewrite 27 over 2 as 13 plus 1 over 2 or 13 and a half. Okay. This is equal to 13 and a half. Okay. Because that's a mixed number. 2 times 13 is 26 plus 1 is 27. 27 over 2, right? Over here, the way you write it is this. You're going to go this over this, x squared plus 5x plus 6 divided by x plus 1 is equal to x plus 4 plus 2 divided by x plus 1. Okay. And the expression for this, so then it would be 2, yeah, exactly, exactly, Elvis. Evil on toast, not Elvis, evil on toast. <laughs> welcome, welcome, right? And take a look at this, okay? Now, if you wanted to go from here back to here, this is what you would do. You would put this over 1, right? So I'm just going to do a little aside here. x plus 4 over 1 plus 2 over x plus 1. The common denominator here is x plus 1, right? So you can draw your x plus 1. And you're going to multiply the top by x plus 1. So that's going to be x plus 4 times x plus 1, because that's what you have to multiply 1 by to give you x plus 1, plus 2. If you FOIL this out, you're going to get x squared plus x plus 4x plus 4. And then you got plus 2 here, right? All over x plus 1 yeah and then you combine your like terms that's an x squared that's x plus 4x is 5x so this becomes x squared plus 5x 4 plus 2 is 6 over x plus 1 so you end up getting the original back right sorry if it's a little too small but it's just I can just even read it out just to prove that you get the original back just the same way as you get the original back here right that's how you do long division now let's do something a little bit more complicated because this is just a general gist of it and there's a meaning behind this by the way okay what we just found out is this doesn't go evenly into that which means this is not a factor of that right so for example uh, let me erase all these. I'm going to leave these two guys up here. I'm just going to change these guys a little bit. Okay. <laughs> I love math. Cool. So I'm going to erase these guys. And by the way, if you need to save these as notes, if you're 
dealing with this in school or trying to learn this on yourself just take a screen capture of this so you have it okay so if we erase this let me modify the original questions slightly so you see what happens right take a look at this what if we made this guy actually let's change the bottoms instead of change top. that's 27 let's change the bottom guy to three okay and let's change this guy to a two okay now just take a look at what happens 27 divided by three okay now three doesn't go into two so you're not going to deal with three and two okay so basically you ask yourself how many times does three go into two you go zero right so you don't, you never do this but i'm going to show you uh the step so you know what's really taking place and then i'm going to erase it right so you ask yourself how many times does three go into two it doesn't it goes zero times so you put zero zero times three is zero right and then you subtract those you get two and then you get seven down right now you're going to deal with the two numbers together how many times does three go into 27 and that's nine so you put nine here nine times three is 27 so that's zero you subtract them so 27 divided by three is nine is it it works out okay it goes in perfectly now how does that play out here let's do this guy this is x plus 2 and you got x squared plus 5x plus 6 okay so how many times or what do you multiply x by to give you x squared and the answer is x right and x multiplies this and this and you put them down here right so x times x is x squared x times 2 is plus 2x right and then we subtract this from the top I change the signs and add them right so minus and minus right if I'm doing it with a pen and paper or pencil and paper that's what I would do and I would just cross this out so I don't get confused right and then you go x squared minus x squared they kill each other 5x minus 2x is 3x okay and once you reach this level you bring this guy down plus 6 and then you ask yourself what do you multiply x by to give you 3x well you multiply by 3 so you go plus 3 so 3 multiplies this and this right so 3 times x is 3x 3 times 2 is plus 6 you subtract this from here right change the signs and add them minus minus this kills this this kills this you got zero left over what just happened was this if you divide this by this the answer is x plus 3 now take a look at this x squared plus 5x plus 6 divided by x plus 2 is equal to x plus 3 because we have nothing left over zero left over if you want you could write it the way we wrote it previously you can go plus zero over x plus 2 but zero divided by anything is just zero you don't have to include that right so that's what we got so far take a look at this cross multiply this guy up because you can't right you got an equality an equal sign so you can cross multiply it up take this cross multiply it up you got x squared plus 5x plus 6 is equal to x plus 3 times x plus 2. if you foil this out you're going to get that this is this guy factored right this is a trinomial simple trinomial and we've done a lot of simple trinomials if you're trying to factor a simple trinomial you ask yourself what do you mul what multiplies to give you six and ask to give you five and that's two and three so you write it out there right so for example let's do another aside here i know i'm missing some comics uh people i'll read the chat i just want to make sure i i cover this so the flow of information goes well enough right if you foil this out x plus 3 times x plus 2 you're going to get x squared plus 2x plus 3x plus 6 combine them you get x squared plus 5x plus 6 right which is what we had right so 
If you're able to factor something completely, if you divide by one of the factors, what's left over is the other factor. Here's another way you can think about it. Let me erase this guy. Okay, take a screen cap if you need to. Okay. Now just imagine this. If you wanted to simplify this, all you would have to do is factor the top. And if you factor the top, here, let's do simple trinomial factor, right? What do you multiply to give you positive 6 and add to give you positive 5? 2 times 3 gives you 6. 2 plus 3 gives you 5. So you can factor the top and go, the top is really x plus 2, x plus 3, and we're going to divide it by x plus 2. Well, guess what? x plus 2 kills x plus 2. The answer is x plus 3. Okay. That's another way you can look at it as well. Now, I'm just going to rechat, and then I'm going to show you what this means, what it implies, right? Let me put on my glasses. Chicho gives education for free. Is that legal? <laughs> it is in my world. <laughs> Math is beautiful when it works, yeah. Hello, Rendell. How are you doing? Damn, I love math. Nerds, nerds. Throw the ball, piece of paper. Hey, I still got it. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Evil on touch, you still got it. What was the X over? What was it? It was uh, 2 over X plus 1. Uh, da -da -da. Yeah. <laughs> Education for free, not in the US. He was a criminal. Not everybody's a criminal. Everybody's a criminal. Those in horrible math peddlers I used to get uh, screwed in algebra because uh, I tried to use shortcuts aka blind guessing to get out of doing the actual yeah a lot of people do that you don't want to do blind guessing in math that's the beauty of math right guessing is just doesn't work guessing doesn't work oh wow we got two chats how come we got two of these things going oh I think that's because I got the uh, stream labs on here as well that's what's going on i'm gonna grab this guy bring it over Boop. and resize it to that i'm gonna take out the alerts i just added uh, by the way i just signed up for stream labs as well that's where you were getting when people and thank you for the follows and the, uh, and the subs by the way if i've missed any okay but just to let you know why we're getting two one popping up here and another one popping up here is because i just signed up for stream labs and i put the notifications on there uh, and that comes in with um, donations as well through stream labs uh, so the, i'm incorporating more tech into here and i'm definitely going to be i'm just using regular obs but at uh, maybe this week or in the next month or so I'm gonna load on Streamlabs OBS and start using Streamlabs OBS okay uh, my exam results demonstrated my luck <laughs> yeah, I think 70% every time really that's pretty good guessing man if you higher higher level math you go to the guessing is not gonna work I love how you say kills not cancel yeah <laughs> sorry or it, it is what I do, right? Uh, I try to watch my language sometimes when I'm working with younger kids, though. I don't say kill. I say... I think I do sometimes. It's just my habit. But I do sort of say... Uh, eliminates or... Nah, you know what? No matter how hard I try, kills comes out, but cancels. Uh, see, we are doing some algebra today. Glad that you teach be uh, people the basics as they are required for progression 100% I think most of the problem in mathematics people have is because of the basics have you ever come across a math problem you could not figure out oh for sure spider yeah 100% yeah really 100 it, like I don't consider myself to be a mathematician I just know enough math high school math anyway to be able to do everything I need to do in my life that requires mathematics and trust me, with high school math, you can do anything you want, almost anything you want it in your life with the knowledge of high school mathematics, except for the you know 0.01% that 
want to go into some special fields and stuff like this even when they do you can still do what you need to do right uh, but even hardcore mathematicians have come across problems they haven't been able to solve it's driven some of them insane okay not me i don't go insane not trying to solve a problem uh, what does that uh, mean i don't know uh, a lot of numbers a lot of numbers i keep seeing them what do they mean depends when you're seeing them brother chain shop at chan maybe if you have time can you show long division with two variables um where you need to get the value of a variable i'll try to find the uh, question if that uh, does make sense i don't even even tell us i don't think i've come across a uh, long division with two variables not that i recall anyway i probably did in university but i don't remember doing any for like 30 years so uh, i would have to probably look it up to be able to remember the technique uh the numbers have symbolic of course da, 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 da. Uh, that's a whole different subject man that is a whole different subject uh, that goes into spiritualism which is 100 percent uh, different than mathematics 100 percent agreed 100 percent agreed my favorite mathematician is Cedric uh Bilali. such a cool guy and won the field medal ah oh, cool i don't know which one he is uh, what he came up with i found high school math vital to my skills although university is completely different equations yeah but if you know you've done you know your algebra university you're okay with uh, made to insult nero caesar was it it has nothing to do with satan or hell yeah very mathematics doesn't people try to incorporate it are you able to prove that through math mathematics though mathematics is uh, there's a there's a theorem called chain of uh, chain chan uh, there's a not a theorem but the basic principle of mathematics is the incompleteness theorem they call it the incompleteness theorem and the incompleteness theorem by the way we're going to continue on this i'm going to show you what this means right the incompleteness theorem says that you cannot analyze anything from within the system right so a system is incomplete it cannot give you the answers to everything because it is a closed system to a certain degree i'm really uh, simplifying the matter now take a look at this we still need this up we don't need this up because that was just for the long division so let's kill this guy okay now if you recall and we've done this before let's assume this is a function f of x right x squared plus 5x plus 6 and you want to graph this and if you're going to graph this because it's a parabola it graphs something like this right because it's a parabola you would do um completing the square but you can do it without completing the square okay what you can do is factor this x x plus two plus three okay and right now we have now this line here this is the same as this they mean exactly the same thing they're saying the same thing okay this is my mouse this is my mouse my mouse this is mouse mine like different ways of saying things right it's the same way as saying oh f of x is also equal to uh x squared plus 5x plus 5 plus 1. that is the same as that is the same as that because 5 plus 1 is 6 right we're just rewriting it in a different way because by rewriting it you get different types of information out of it okay or you could get different types of information out of it marco how are you doing hey chicho i tutor a student in grade seven he wants to get ahead of his level should i teach him math before physics or vice versa i think i can start with basic physics and then go more in depth with mathematics uh sure you can go physics and mathematics but for me my physics students uh teaching them physics is basically explaining them how a system works right so for example if i'm throwing this guy like this right we do a little drawing we say oh this is me here's the pen i threw it right there let me make it a dotted line right so the physics part of it comes like this right it goes and i ran over and i caught it right here's it or i'm passing it on to someone else my stick figures even suck right 
of throwing it to someone else, right? That's the physics. And the physics information, the data you get from it is, oh, the distance from the throw to the catch, let's say it's 10 meters, okay? Um, what else? We could give other bits of information, the weight of this thing, and uh, you know, if there's wind being played or whatnot, or you could give the height, or you could say how high does it go, or whatever it is, right? The mathematics part comes in like this. Oh, this is a quadratic equation, which happens to be this, and to be able to analyze this projectile, the motion of this projectile, hello, curious, how are you doing? To analyze the, the motion of this projectile, this function will do it. Minus one, let's say, or plus six, plus six. Let's assume it's the same function, but you can analyze this, the motion of this projectile, right? That's the mathematics. The physics is the motion, the drawing, what's really taking place. So it's up to you. You can present a physical situation and then overlay the mathematics, or you could teach the mathematics and explain to them that this mathematics applies to the system. I go both ways, depending on what the student is doing. If I'm teaching a math first, physics, physics, math, or what they're receptive to. Um, it really depends. But you can go either way. But make sure they, the one thing, make sure they understand that without the mathematics, they couldn't do the physics. We, like, analyze the system. You need the mathematics to analyze the system. Okay. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. I prefer to be taught the system first. For example, retractive index. I'd like to learn about how it works and what it used, what it used for before I started into the calculation school. Math is used to help us understand physics. It's it's the language we under, it's the language we use to do calculations for physics and for chemistry and biology and whatnot. Right? Physics. It's meant to be a tool for understanding the world around us. 100% agree. Math has worked so well as a tool all the way up to until quantum uh, physics. That's where we are trying to develop new math to help understand quantum properties. Yeah, he is really curious about, uh, about science. He's interested in terms such as absolute zero and the anatomy of the sun. Oh, fantastic, man. You got a good student, Marco nice i love having students like that right fantastic you can just just pump them full of information right and then once they start going a little crazy reduce it let a little bit of air out and then focus on certain topics that you might have talked about right uh, so try to think as math as a tool and not a solid concept yeah the language i like to i always tell my students it's the language we use to understand the world it's the, it, in every field economics politics science music doesn't make a difference right oh i thought you were talking about i want to use math to solve spiritual problems you can if you want if you know the language of mathematics you can apply it anywhere if you can come up with a theorem right to solve spiritual problems and that hypothesis can be replicated and the mathematics behind it is sound then you just won a global award and it, there might be I don't know if there is right you might be become one of the most famous people in the world by using mathematics to prove that spirituality certain aspects of it are real right that's what 21 grams is about and other things like people try to prove this stuff but very, very important. Other people must be able to replicate your results if you're conducting experiments. That's taking it from the realm of mathematics to the realm of experiments, science, right? You, science has certain steps you have to do, right? Hypothesize something, uh, you know, come up with a hypothesis, conduct, collect the data, uh, conduct the experiments, get the results, repeat. Someone else has to be able to uh, recreate your experiment, right? Uh, not sure is the Bible the pyramid well a lot of spiritual texts have numbers in them right 
for example the number 19 appears in the in the Quran in the uh, uh, Muslim spiritual text right number 7 number 12 appear in the Bible uh, the Torah has you know magic numbers a lot of them do right shapes numbers there's uh, what do you call it uh, solid uh, geometry the magic objects I forget the names man. I better go to sleep it's getting late okay evil on toes hope you have fantastic dreams mathematical dreams mathematical dreams I can't wait to rewatch the stream later and top up my old knowledge nice also it's my first experience with a student teaching someone is great for reinforcing past talk yeah and by the way Marco what you're gonna find out is you're gonna learn a lot of things from simple stuff that you thought you knew because your students gonna be asking you questions and even the most simple questions that you know what you need to do to get the answer start looking into why you do it and the why will blow you away it did me really when I started teaching mathematics I knew you know a lot of the stuff I was teaching but I didn't know why I was doing certain things that I was doing once I started looking into it I was like how come they didn't teach me in this in school right once you start doing the whys uh, Marco your student is just gonna and then they're gonna pass on the word to other their friends and families and you're gonna start getting a lot of calls people saying hey can you teach me physics or math or whatever it is right and not you know not to mention that your knowledge of the world is gonna greatly improve it's it's basically an upgrade to your processing system if you can teach it man teach it well I'm not talking about just get monkey monkey see monkey do right answer your students questions if you can teach it well it, it becomes an upgrade to the processing system because all of a sudden you see everything all around you is very trippy it's very cool have you ever heard of the magic square of the Sun Chicho you might find it super interesting it can be it can be recreated magic square of the Sun I don't think so uh, it's good to have ambitions but just be warned math was intended as a tool for physics so it may be difficult applying it to metaphysics a good analogy is, is trying to use a carving knife to hammer in a nail you can work but it will be a lot harder than hammer yeah but sorry for the interruption let's get back to quadratic equation. let's get back to quadratic also did you teach the audience linear equations before this I have taught linears before but we can definitely go over it we're gonna do a little bit of linear right now by the way I'm gonna show you linear because this is a called a quadratic but each one of these individually is a linear function and we've talked about this right uh, is it possible for a person with non-mathematical brain to learn math yeah everybody has a mathematical brain it's like saying is it is it possible for people that don't have a natural language brain to be able to speak any natural language yeah everybody can learn how to communicate mathematics is just a language it's just a way we've decided to or the system we've come up with to analyze the world to talk about the systems within this world everybody has math abilities mathematics is an in innate property I wrote an article on my blog if you do Chicho mathematics innate feature of human beings it'll, it'll show up right here here let me uh, dear uh, park uh, live let me give you an example that proves to you that even like anyone who even you who asked this question will appreciate that you have a math ability right so and then we'll go back to this stuff yeah the education system is terrible especially in Canada it's horrendous in Canada uh, yes it is think of mathematics as a language it would be uh, far-fetched to think it's impossible to learn something yeah now just on that note aside from math being a language and stuff like this here's the innate property innate ability that human beings have and by the way a monkey has this innate abilities as well 
and I've proposed this experiment before and I don't know if it's ever been conducted right just imagine right something that you really like right some kind of food that you really like if we want to make it cookies here's a cookie right here's a chocolate chip cookie right? and here are exactly the same cookies but four of them which one is more is this more than this if you understand the concept of more you have math abilities right I realize that there are some people that have difficulty with this but out of the seven plus billion human beings on this planet if you presented this to them and you ask them which one is more if they're the same size I'm talking about physical cookies just take physical cookies put them in front of them and ask them which one is more they would say that one right if you ask them which one would you like to have if you could have this one or those ones you would say those ones and the exp the the high, the proposal I've been <laughs> I've made before and I and I mentioned this to my students and I tell them at the end look I don't know if this is true or not but this is what I tell them right I say because they say oh I don't have math abilities I hate math I don't understand math so first thing as a as someone who tries to teach people mathematics is to convince people that mathematics is not magic it's an eight less is more <laughs> that's awesome it could be it could be right the one of the tricks to teaching people mathematics is try to convince them that math is not magic okay and it's an innate ability that everybody has even monkeys and this is this is what I tell my students right if I find them they're they're getting pissed they're closing off they're, they don't believe me or anything like this I go listen just imagine a monkey right they go okay I got, there's a monkey because everybody likes monkeys right oh almost everybody likes monkeys right so they go, oh monkey monkey so it gets them perked up right I go just imagine if you had a monkey and we usually we're usually sitting on a table and I say just imagine a monkey sitting at a table over there right and you put one banana here and you put a whole bunch of bananas over here right uh, which one is the monkey gonna go for right is the monkey gonna go for one banana or is the monkey gonna go for a bunch of bananas right and I guess because we have human abilities we know we understand the concept of more and less almost all my students say they're gonna go for that one I go well even a monkey knows mathematics because they know the concept of more right so all you have to do beyond this is to break the more down into individuals being added together to create the more and then you add addition and stuff like this and then from there we'll go back to the topic that we're doing right it's just planting seeds trying to break barriers within them okay a monkey tore off my arm <laughs> that's the part i don't care for monkeys <laughs> right i think people start to get confused when variables come into play exactly and one of the things i do marco with variables right if they're having a hard time with it uh, they need to understand that a variable is just a placeholder for a value in an equation 100% so sometimes what I do is if I'm writing it like this I go instead of f of x of course if they're not understanding variables I say this a triangle is equal to a box squared plus five times a box plus six so instead of using x's and y's I use triangles and boxes right and then I go okay let's assume we got a whole bunch of different things and we're adding them up right and then I go oh a box plus a triangle plus a diamond minus a star I don't know plus uh, whatever that shame is called and stuff and they go okay I go look isn't this getting a little confusing and most students go okay yeah a little bit I go like we're running out of shapes right we can create an infinite number of shapes but minor difference is very difficult so you know the alphabet gives us 26 letters why not just use letters x plus y plus z minus w 
plus B, right? Isn't that easier than placeholders? And then we move on, right? So I don't spend too much time on these things. I break down uh, small barriers that students have put up really rapidly. Boom, 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 boom. Let them get get rid of their anxiety about it, right? And then if they still have a hard time with it, during the lessons, I go back to it. I go, okay, what's the placeholder? You know, what's the box? And then we do substitutions, right? Let's go back to this guy. So this sentence is the same as this sentence, right? The issue, it's unknown variables. For me, finding the value of variables was always hard. Um, that's because... Uh, you didn't know how to move around an equal sign so it's not finding the value of the variable that's difficult one of the main issues that i found that people have is they don't know and this is a box because it could be a big expression they don't know how to move around an equal sign okay that's the reason I put out a video. If you do a search for Chicho equal sign, what it means to solve an equation, right? If you, I, I think I called it what it means to solve an equation, right? And I put out a bunch of videos on this. One of them was ASMR, which was a long extended video. And, and there was a bunch of them that we put out for the language of mathematics, right? And we've done some other ASMR videos on this too, right? So if you do Chicho equal sign, you find videos where I specifically focus on how to move around an equal sign. Because when it comes to solving for something, all it means is get the variable by itself. That's it. And that's one of the things I emphasize with my students. What it means to solve an equation means get the variable by itself, right? And we start off with simple stuff here. We'll start off with this. We're taking a lot of tangent, but these are good questions, okay? So if we have this, x plus 2 is equal to 5, right? I say solve this equation, and I ask them, what is it that I'm asking you? And they say, well, to find out what x is. I go, yeah, but mathematically, what is it that I'm asking you? And if they don't give me the answer, I say, to get x by itself. How do you get this guy on one side of the equal sign by itself? And what you need to do is undo what's being done to it, right? So this is x plus 2. So 2 is being added to x. So to undo this, you got to subtract 2 from this side. And an equal sign is a scale. It says if you do one thing on one side, you've got to do it to the other side. So you can't just arbitrarily subtract 2 from this side without subtracting 2 from this side. So you have to do it to both sides. So you subtract 2 from here. Line up your equal sign. You still have the x here, but 2 minus 2, they're done, right? They kill each other. 5 minus 2 is 3. You got the x by itself, so x is equal to 3. That's what it means to solve an equation. Get the variable by itself. And then once they appreciate this, we might do, you know, add a number here, do a division, there's a whole bunch of stuff you do, right? And then to really solidify the concept of getting whatever variable you need to by itself i write something wacko right i go like this i go w2 plus 5z divided by qx is equal to 2y minus 6 i don't know what else we got k over n right and i say oh solve for x or solve for k or solve for n so i pick one of these variables and I say solve for it, and they go, what? I go get it by itself, right? And then I watch them do their thing, okay? Guys, if you're, if you're confused about math, check this guy out. Great content, man. You have a special touch with explain terms. Uh, thanks, Marco. Uh, math comes in handy for me with uh, recipe. Yeah, recipe is huge, especially pastry baking right nicholas beyond that my brain closes down but i've been enjoying the stream so far awesome awesome glad you like it nicholas your channel is a great variety of content ranging from trigonometry yeah my linear algebra would hit up a lot more 
uh, once we get into matrices determinants, but basic linear algebra right here we're about to do. Watch this. Okay. So as we said, this, this is the same as this, right? This sentence says the same thing as this sentence. And here's the difference between them. Okay. This one is a quadratic. Okay. You write it as a quadratic equation. Quadratic. Okay. This is also a quadratic because it's two linears multiplied together. Okay. So that's a linear, which is a line. And this is a linear, which is a line, which multiplied together gives us a quadratic. Quadratic equation, which is a parabola, right? So first of all, let's graph each one of these guys because this says f of x, our function, is this line multiplied by this line, okay? So what you can do is call this line h of x a new function and you can call this line g of x name for another function. If you don't like h of x and g of x, you can call this h you can call that g, you can call this y. I'm just using f of x, h of x, and g of x just to uh, introduce these concepts because higher level mathematics use more complicated expressions, symbols to represent a function. Excellent stream, I'm drawing them. I almost understand you, nice. You, this is gonna make you feel pretty, pretty cool about this, right? So basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna graph h of x. So h of x is equal to x plus two, and g of x is equal to x plus three, right? So another way you could write this function is f of x is equal to h of x times g of x. This guy times that guy. So take two lines and multiply them together, you get h, f of x. And what is f of x? f of x is a quadratic function. Quadratic function. It's the same function. This is my mouse. My mouse this is. This mouse belongs to me. It's saying the same thing. <laughs> okay. This, this, this. They mean f of x. But let's graph h of x and g of x individually. Right? h of x is x plus 2 and this is a line linear function which is y is equal to mx plus b right where m is the slope and b is the y intercept right and if there's no number in front of a variable it's just one 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 right some people get confused about that if i write down y it means one times y divided by one to the power of one, right? But we never write that, we don't need to, okay? So the way you graph a line is you go to the y-intercept and you do the slope, right? And one is the slope, and the slope is rise over run. So we're gonna go to two, right? And then the slope is one over one, which means up one over one. And we're going to graph this. That's h of x. Okay. This one is the y-intercept of 3, 1, 2, 3, and then up 1, over 1. It's going to be parallel to it. It has the same slope. So if we draw this, my line had a little bump here. Here, let's get rid of the bump so it looks cleaner. Right. So we have that. Okay. Hey Chicho, love your channel, especially your color calls. Me too. <laughs> I love the channel and I really like like the color calls. <laughs> and the mathematics and the pomegranate uniqueness, right? So that's h of x, this guy, and that's g of x, right? G of x. So we graph two lines. Now if we want to find out what f of x is, f of x is this line times that line, okay? And 
if we complete the square to this and stuff like this what we get let me do this in a different color let's do this in orange let's see how orange is going to come up if we graph this line and we've graphed this line before it turns out to be like this okay so just imagine just imagine we have three different sentences that tell us what f of x is which we've come up with three different ways to represent and graphically well this one is just a summation of this one so we basically come up with two different ways to represent this right and this one basically breaks it down into two lines multiplied together to give you the function and that one is them already multiplied together and it gives you this form okay the equivalent of this is this okay equivalent of this is saying six here let's do this in green it's like saying saying six is equal to two times three so if you go to a store to buy something and something is six dollars they'll say the item is six dollars what if the school was a, a the the store was a mathematical store and the guy was very eccentric and he wanted to teach people mathematics and whenever you went to buy something it would be an operation that would give you the price of the object so instead of pricing the object is six dollars okay he would say the price of this object is two times three dollars and you would have to do this calculation to figure out what you have to pay at the till that's the that's the equivalent of this right really if you want just ridiculous comparison right does this make sense not really but it is what it is right now what does it mean when you're dividing well when you're dividing you're saying this take this orange function f of x and divide out x plus 2 divide out that what do you end up getting oh you end up getting this function g of x which is equal to x plus 3. here let me erase these guys because we did this already right so this is equal to x plus 3. Okay. How does this apply like an example in the real world? Just imagine doing biology or chemistry and you want to find out what certain compounds are made from. You break them down. Just imagine if this was a compound and you want to take out one element from it or one mineral from it or something. You want to find out what you end up with. Okay. I'm just going to read a little bit of chat. I hope that made sense. That was sort of long division. I, and we can do a bigger, we'll do a big polynomial long division when I erase this, okay? I'm just going to get caught up with the chat a little bit. Uh, also, slope is rise over one. Yeah, also slope is rise over one. The one is one up, one over. So slope is, slope of a line is equal to rise over run and if you have two points is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 okay uh, math is very important for measuring narrow band uva rays too bad my math skills are just barely sufficient i have the uh, permanent scar tissue to prove it permanent scar tissue nice job man you've got my attention cool cool that's good i'm glad you're enjoying it uh, i be booker 1 a.m is a little late for math for me gives you nice dreams uh, it's 7 p.m here in texas right now we're in vancouver west coast of canada 5 p.m so texas you're two hours ahead of us ahead of me anyway i have drank a lot of vodka but the dude makes sense <laughs> hopefully it's not just the vodka speaking not to be mistaken for texas germany is there a texas in germany I'm UK. I should be asleep, but to be honest, 
Texas, Japan. Is there a Texas in Japan? No. I agree with your logic. Hello. How can removing an element be like dividing by another expression? Because you're taking out an element. When you're dividing, you're taking out. It's not subtracting. Well, it is subtracting. Division is really subtraction. Okay. It's the opposite of multiplication. And multiplication is an extension of addition. So it's all a loop, really. Okay. What's an example we could use? Oh, man, my chemistry and biology isn't very good. Okay. It really isn't. Right. But H2O, take water, for example. All right. Let me erase these. Uh, what we're going we're to do one long division, right? So hopefully you took a pick if you wanted it. But basically you could do this. H2O is water, right? H2O. Divide out. I know. I don't even know in chemistry if this is what they do. Well, actually, let's divide out an H. Let's divide out an H so people don't confuse us with zero, right? Divide out an H. Well, what do you got left over? You got HO. Think of it that way. I don't know if that's a legit expression, but that's the way you can think about it. Why not? Right? The color, the markers, dry erase stuff. Use, uh, use a filament on there. Hey, Chicho, do you like uh, SpaceX or uh, NASA? Sorry for the odd question, but I'm curious to hear your uh, your division. Um, I like space exploration. I'm not a huge fan of NASA. They put out some good stuff, but I also think they do many nasty things, and they have done many nasty things, right? It's really a military operation, right? And no matter what they say, right? SpaceX, uh, I'm okay with it, but uh, again, I don't know how the workings go. I, I am just to generalize I'm in full support of space exploration 100% humanity's future is in space okay we need to break that barrier and explore space we have uh, well it depends how if you consider the Sun the end of the Sun to be when the Sun goes I think it's gonna go uh, red giant is it gonna I forget what this our Sun is meant to do what is end lifespan is going to be the size it's in and what it's burning out and stuff like this but the Sun is basically whatever happens to the Sun besides our future right and the Sun has a limit of lifespan right and we might have a limited lifespan depending on how we treat the environment right all right I get it okay are there any kids in here that are smart enough to just ask their math homework questions if I was still in school I would totally pray. see that's the kicker right price a pricey m9 right I've set these up to give people the opportunity right not necessarily in school you could be anywhere I've had people I've had people here come in that they want to write their uh, equivalency tests and stuff like this or they're trying to learn something to uh, for an entrance exam or they're trying to learn something so they can get a job when they're applying and stuff like this but personally if i had the service available where someone was offering two hours uh, to help you out i'd be here in a heartbeat right i would have been here in a heartbeat so there will be this is the future of education and it is here right now it's not really the future but uh our education system centralized education system is so horrendous it hasn't empowered kids to try to find solutions to their problems right they it's converted them them into passive uh, consumers of everything right uh, that is changing and it will need to change and I'm seeing the changes taking place by the way this viewer is called uh, elimination du -du -du. spacex is just an investment uh, investment cow sad to say possibly yeah most people think that nasa is a civilian but why the stuff they have in uh, or, yeah nasa is not civilian they, it's like it's like it's like saying oh bill gates is a nice person because he uh, contributes a certain amount of uh, from his billions that he has a few million dollars to charity or ten and they're not really charity they're investments in to 
the future of Microsoft and Bill Gates, right? They're not really charities. None of these things, right? So, so there are there are people that say, you know, these oligarchs are really nice because they give millions of dollars to their favorite charities, which aren't again aren't charities, they're investments into their future, right? And then there are people who realize what the rest of the stuff is that they're doing, right? NASA is the same way. I treat them the same. Will become a red giant. Red giant. That's what it, our sun will become. That will end life on Earth, unless we adapt, right? We need to go into space, and Earth will. Yeah, it'll end life in Earth because it'll consume the Earth. So the Earth will be done for. We need to get off this planet, <laughs> right? I know they will follow through on any of their promises or ambitions. SpaceX, you mean? Yeah, they're not going to Mars. Yes, not yet anyway. Not for another 100 years, 150 years, 200 years. Uh, maybe, right? Colonizing Mars is not going to happen for a long, long time. Battles to Chicho Alive. I really wish NASA would make their alpha particle readings public. That's actually true. Like these streams are still very informative. You don't just solve problems that you get asked. You teach on the methods to solve similar problems, 100%. And that was my intention. And that is my intention for all of my math work and not what I'm doing online here with the live streams, with the videos. That is exactly the way I treat my students, right? May they be just uh, students that I work with online or students that I work with in person, right? I'm not here just to answer, do their homework for them. I'm here to explain to them what the question is asking them that they see in their homework and how that applies in the bigger picture of things and how they can think about solving it, right? And sometimes that involves going through it once or twice or three times and then you let them loose a little bit and let them go on their own, right? If they don't know how to do it after one, two, three times, then you gotta kick it back a notch and figure out where they're having the problems, right? I've been pretty far in physics, but I always uh, sucked in math. Yes, this is real. And there are so many gaps in my mind until today. Like how are math domains really divided and what are the real practical fields of each domain and why? Yeah, it's incredible. I've known people like my math has been pretty good in general. There's certain physics courses that I've taken where the physicists, the people there taking the physics were better at it than I was, right? Because they'd seen, they've done a lot of work, they've seen those types of problems, they knew how to solve them. And they would help me out and I would help them out with the mathematics. And collaboration, if you're in school, collaborating with other students, other people, or even if you're not in school, just collaboration is an amazing way to learn really two heads are better than one and so on and so on uh, da, da, da. i would like to know the speed at which uh ba, ba. i would like to know speed at which alpha particles travel outside earth orbit it would be nice uh, imagine waking up for school in the morning and logging out to twitch <laughs> yeah that would be amazing dude that would be amazing right you know parents asking hey what are you doing kid what are you doing son daughter whatever right i'm gonna go on twitch no games now no 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 i'm gonna log on to a live stream tutoring session fantastic fantastic right the best thing would be to use this planet to the max with the less less energy consumed yeah and we have a nuclear power plant in space the sun that is sending us a tremendous amount of energy why are we not, we not maximizing that use of energy, right? Uh, I'm the same with biology. One day we will get through this and fill the gaps. Yeah, I respect you, man. You're a scholar in the true sense. Thanks, brother. Uh, do you teach uh, as a prof uh, profession or are you retired? Retired? No, I'm not old enough. Uh, I, I, first of all, I don't think I'll ever retire. Retire? For me, retirement from one field means I'm getting into another field, right? If you don't mind me asking, uh, I, I teach as a profession, yeah. I teach, I have students, I, I consider this part of my profession, 
having the space available to answer questions and stuff I learn from these streams okay I learn from the interaction from the different types of questions coming my way and we have there's a lot of times we have people here in the live streams that are from Russia or India or wherever it might be uh, from the Middle East from South America from the United States Canada, wherever it might be where their mathematics is more powerful than mine and sometimes when there's a question being asked I don't know the answer and I can't help out they help out in the chat I learned from this right? there's so much energy available uh, to us both in the earth orbit and below its surface yeah below its surface is huge it's just a matter of how to get it and how to get it fast and there's another place uh, that there is energy that I've read stuff that explored is zero point energy in a vacuum there's energy there right how do we tap into that right from what I understand or just take a cubic feet of just air there's energy there right biology and chemistry don't require advanced mathematics at least at the uh, apprentice level you mostly only need to know basic mathematics to deal with atoms and cells yeah ever heard of couplets or I don't know, drive no I uh, purpose I don't think so I would have to look those up to see what they are uh, maybe I have to read the description on them I'm bad with names so chemistry does require advanced mathematics when you're dealing with radioactive compounds it it's it's radioactive decay and growth radioactive compounds is radioactive decay right uh, biology you have uh, bacteria growth that's uh, exponential growth those to a certain degree could be considered more advanced mathematics but it's all high school mathematics when it comes to radioactive decay if you're looking at how they're decaying if you're going to a subatomic level uh, yeah you need more powerful physics once again I have the scar tissue of a possible future cancer to prove it oh no you got exposed to radiation that's not good yeah in the end uh, in the end play we have uh, Dyson Dyson spheres but I think that will will uh, we will travel first Dyson spheres there are some lobbies the fossil fuel lobby for example and that's sad uh, but historically the reason why the states has gone so far in astrophysics is because they wanted to be better than the Soviets in a military sense politics are still the boundaries for science I think yeah and economics right now it's basically economics is the boundaries of science uh, when it comes to military stuff is politics uh, but economics is driving a lot of the engine it's the engine behind the push right now so you have gone far then <laughs> we are far far away from requiring a Dyson sphere off topic but did you hear the rights experts for the uh, UN WG the working group on arbitrary detention have criticized the UK government for Julian's sentence and are calling for his release saying it's a violation of human rights sorry for the tangent just want to know if you heard about that they've been uh, Nicholas they've been saying that for a while now I believe yeah UN bodies have come out and said uh, Julian Assange's detention is illegal and not only that the UK not only that the, does the UK have to release him they have to compensate for forcing his detention right uh, maybe hopefully we get that we'll see where it goes but we'll uh, the odds are we'll talk a lot more about this in tomorrow's stream uh, when we talk about current events I talked about the fossil fuel lobby because you said why don't we maximize solar energy use yeah and because one of the other reasons is technology I don't want to just beat down on the fossil fuel industry that deserves a serious beat down right really huge they've waged wars and destroyed like ridiculous right but it's also technology we we haven't had the will to reach out into the stars to the capacity that we can because uh, we don't have anything that stores energy right now as well as fossil fuels right so basically if you can think about it, you know think about it oil if this was oil we don't have anything that is 
as contained as this, as easily to transport, easily to use as oil that has this much energy. Everything else requires more, right? I meant at the high school level, but still, if one finds high school math basic, then it is basic. Yeah. I consider high school math to be the bare bones of what you need. What people graduating now need to make sure they have a prosperous future. And that's been the case for the last 20 years. You need high school, you need to know high school mathematics to make sure you have a prosperous future. Okay. Sound, sane. Okay. These types of strings could possibly be more useful for those who find them. My teacher in school used to just teach their curriculum guide lessons by lesson, and that was it. Yeah. Although I suppose I can't blame them when you're trying to teach 30, 40 kids the same thing at the same speed. Yeah. That's one of the reasons I didn't go into the centralized education system. It's impossible to work with. It really. From 30 or 40 people, you might be able to help one or two but you're uh, disenfranchising 28, 38, right? The ratio of the good you're doing to the bad you're doing is too low for me. Yes, uh, in the most reckless and dim-witted theoretical cellular biologist you will ever meet, da, da, da. But seriously, for any kids regarding this radiation, is no joke don't be like me yeah don't get exposed to radiation and one of the things uh, uh genua i can't pronounce your name guanua uh one of the things regarding getting exposed if you're youth when you get a job with a corporation okay if you go into the system right it may be small company or large company or whatever it is you're bought up a total totem pole and you're disposable so if there's dangerous things to be done, they will get you to do them, okay? Keep that in mind, be weary of that, okay? Use your brain. If you're working in an environment where your boss, the company sends you somewhere and they say they want you to do this, do a little pause, do a little breather, okay? Ask yourself, is this the right thing to do for me for my health am i going to be paying the price 5 10 20 30 years down the road for a job right for people who want me to go into this area and collect data or go into this factory and do something really keep this in mind if you're just getting into the workforce you're the bottom of the total pole there are people in positions of power that will take advantage of you be aware of that looking forward to it okay tomorrow's stream yeah me too me too there's a lot going on man wow 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 dudes sorry that i have drunk a lot of vodka the subject involved more than i can handle no worries brother no worries wow. being exposed to radiation on a level like that is not meant to be influencing when I ask how you were exposed that's a good question love your channel thanks brother or sister dinosaur Gerard dinosaur Ger gyre dinosaur Ger dinosaur gyre dinosaur I may may or may not be developing a low energy reactor this may may or not be illegal in my garden dude don't blow people up and don't expose other people to radiation if you're messing around with stuff that are radioactive it's not just your yourself you should be concerned about it's people around you as well right uh don't be silly if that is what you're doing don't type shit like that bro your fbi agent will see <laughs> and i may or may not be experimenting with concentrated uva and uvb narrowband rays and uh palladium damn man i wish i could uh, say I'm doing that at the dinner table <laughs> it's a lot more boring than people think what math do you need to be a legit, legit software engineer um, depends what level if you want to be an electrical engineer you need to go pretty high up in uh, 
in your mathematics. If you want to just get into programming, you don't. Uh, right? Alcohol warp. Alcobir warp drive or Alcobir metric, referring to the metric tensor, is a speculative idea based on a solution of Einstein's field equation in general relativity as, a, as proposed by uh, Mexican theoretical physicist Miguel Al which by which a spacecraft could achieve apparent faster than light travel if a uh, configurable energy density field lower than that of a vacuum that is negative mass could be created really that's cool I don't know about this Paul uh, perps personally I think uh, warp technology folding space and all that jazz is achievable in my lifetime I doubt it in I, I doubt it I don't know how long it's gonna take right but I think it's plausible and basically what uh, purpose saying here is Einstein's theory of relativity his paper on the electrodynamics of moving bodies okay so he put out a paper in 1930 I can't remember what date it was 1920 something uh, Perps might know this right he put a paper called on the moving uh, on the electrodynamics of moving bodies right and in that paper basically uh, in the mathematics equations and we put out a, a video on this by the way if you do Chicho uh, Einstein's theory of relativity there's a video that'll come up that we do a little discussion on this paper and basically in the mathematics of it we find out that we can't travel at the speed of light because in the math equations you get a division by zero so what Perp's saying here is if you can create a negative mass okay so you if you can basically would we consider that antimatter I don't think we consider an antimatter I guess it might be antimatter but if you can consider create negative mass then you can create some kind of field I would have to read this again but you can, can create some kind of field density where it would protect you from the effects of faster and light speed travel in our normal space in matter that's what I'm assuming that it proposes right uh, so basically just imagine having a by the way I could be way off here but that's just from the initial reading this is what I'm visualizing right just imagine that this is you right and you try to go at the speed of light speed light speed here light speed let's write light speed right you can't go at light speed because if you go at light speed you get a division by zero in the equations of mathematics your mass becomes infinite right you would need an infinite amount of energy to get even a particle like something small as this to light speed right so we can't travel light speed because gravity um, gravity and acceleration sort of work the same way and stuff like this right but just imagine if you could create a sphere of negative mass negative mass I'm assuming this is antimatter but I'm not so sure right so you, can, you guys can look this up right if you can create a sphere of negative mass which would create a bubble around it and what does this refer to uh, configure energy density field lower than a vacuum so in this field the physics of normal space wouldn't apply it would basically act as a shield and by being within that shield you could go faster in the speed of light possibly maybe the worms in dune with the spice that's what they were doing right or the what are they called uh, the ones that were using the spice to travel my best friend is a software engineer he used to do freelance uh, scripting and 3d design in, in high school it takes middle school math skills yeah it doesn't take very much if you're just doing programming and stuff I haven't taken advantage of as a previous job because of my work ethic ended up uh, reaching a breaking point and got the boot for it a few months later the manager who exploited me and finally got me can got the boot himself because he was caught handing out personal favors and being overall crap yeah and you see this within corporations in every type of corporation and you see this in governments all over the world perhaps always always support from a aerospace engineer x how are you doing i finally got to your thing i'm way behind chat by the way uh, da, 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 da. the problem is a space with lower density than a vacuum theoretically cannot exist 
theoretically for now anyway Marco right 1905 you put out the paper on the uh, Einstein put out the paper in 1905 on the electrodynamics of moving bodies wow 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 1905 oh you are aerospace engineer now that sounds fascinating all I do is type boring uh, logs down all day and try not to burn myself that's part of data collecting right data collecting is very boring it's also very meditative uh, as long as it be it's become muscle memory what it is that you're doing if I had this guy as a, uh, as a class and you guys as classmates uh, then I would have learned things a future one two two more years of uni left that unavoidably cost $21,000 a year yikes I understand your pain yeah dude great movie great movie indeed I love this great book indeed I love this uh, Chicho Life has been live for one hour and 34 minutes cool oh, wow. by the way you look like the singer system of down Serge Tankian uh, Halim uh, steadfast love system of down been to their shows I've written a review of system of downs music if you do Chicho system of a down you'll get an article where I in 2006 I wrote a review of their music uh, I'm proud of that review it took me a while to write it I was looping system for a while well my debt is nowhere near that high but I understand wanting to be done with it with college yeah yeah school is painful indeed indeed learning brilliant magnificent beautiful soothing not painful education system horrendous painful destructive right you got to balance it out I guess the best dream to be drawn <laughs> I have about a month of uni left and I can't wait to finish get me out yeah that's the way I felt as well I was done I wanted out you're lucky I'm only in my second year of undergrad and by the way Marco it is fun as well so do appreciate it university was a lot of fun but when you can see the light at the end of the tunnel you want out man you want out the University of Toronto has painfully expensive tuition fees I think everybody does now I'll look it up yeah look it up I think you'll like that review Alan. it was uh, uh, it got it uh, people liked it there was a uh, at the time when I wrote it there was an unofficial system with down fan website and they took my review and they put it right beside reviews from Rolling Stone magazine and verb and metal magazines and stuff like this and then there was like Chicho review <laughs> right beside them right uh, it was a good review experiments with radiation except to turn a plant into swamp thing really uh, watches the plant turn uh, bright reddish after two weeks dreams realized my fees are nine grand a year yeah that's expensive man but that's cheap compared to some people I guess it is expensive relative to what I was paying at the time but that was like a long time ago 25 years ago 30 years ago so I guess with inflation my fees would have been about around nine grand now Johnny Quest was a lie signing since the name no Johnny Quest well I haven't watched Johnny Quest for a long time yeah I love the learning process sense of independence and freedom but the cost man the costs are crazy twenty one thousand dollars for a year without the tech without the te what what are you studying Marconi where are you studying it that's the University of Toronto it can't be man unless you're a foreign student and that's what they would charge you they love hosing foreign students and we don't get a loan from a masters in UK not sure if you do so I couldn't afford to do one even if I want to yeah people get loans to do masters and PhDs at any school you gotta get a loan so cool I always thought their lyrics were deep yeah their lyrics were crazy deep system of down this is I would love to see a musical of system of downs music right with from their first album to the last you could create a m magnificent musical with system of downs system of downs music 
Oh, aerospace engineering. Yikes. 21000 a year, dude. That is insane. That is ridiculous. I bow to this. <laughs> Learning is amazing indeed. I have to say, I really appreciate people who share their knowledge. I have a lot of love for taking an idea, uh, taking in ideas. My problem has always been uh, special, uh, specialization and focusing in on one thing. I imagine my little heaven would be a huge library to share with people with all the possible books and getting all the uh, possible uh, conversations awesome yeah for me I jump from different uh, fields ideas and things I'm interested in as you can tell with my channel right uh, so I have a hard time focusing on one thing and I compensate that uh, by focusing on multiple things that way when I need to focus on one thing I can because it's not the only thing I'm focusing on I felt the same way when applying my total that is 15 grand I'm not ashamed to admit I pirated 70% of my textbooks nice freedom of information man. freedom of information 100% why are textbooks $200 a textbook $100 a textbook $300 a textbook really ridiculous ridiculous there it's just highway robbery right hopefully I get a job when I graduate and they'll fund the masters for me, for me part-time that'd be a good way my program on pharmaceuticals are the two most expensive uh, programs I believe wow so aerospace and pharmaceutical yeah the reason pharmaceutical is because it's the pharmaceutical industry uh, and it pays really well and you get perks and I'm not a huge fan of it uh, it's basically in most part anyway we won't go down that road what program are you in I'm in France uh, studies have cost me zero zero euros haha <laughs> sometimes we don't realize how lucky we are until we compare our uh, situation to others yeah you are Alan. very lucky okay as in what do I study or where am I studying uh, both I guess what do you study sports science wow 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 cool so kinesiology and stuff as well yeah pricey but it's worth worth it my job pays a good amount yeah so a few years will pay off my debt as long as the economy doesn't take a huge tumble right as long as the economy doesn't take a huge tumble which it could which is the trap that some people fall into right when they go into when they start off university there's huge demand for what they're getting a degree for what they're getting an education for training for by the time they graduate the whole industry is taken up it's collapsed right now the trick is to get an introductory job and wait out the downturn and reap the rewards when it's picking up again it's a cycle but keep this in mind everything is a cycle so make sure you're not going finishing school or have a lot of debt at the peak of the cycle and you're gonna go into a low end of the cycle right so if you're but for now I'm living with my parents for the next few years yeah yeah a little bit of uh, biomechanics and stuff like that that's the most math I have to do on my course cool that is enslavement especially when it's based on interest usury but that's my personal opinion it is that's that's not a personal opinion Ali that is the fact of our current economic system right and to make sure people stay in that gov banking institutions and money lenders have taken over governments right they've done there's been regulatory capture and they've passed laws to make sure that when people declare bankruptcy their debts are not wiped clean so they're in debt for ever right I agree that we have the ability to get drunk and listen to smart people at the same time <laughs> that's funny uh, Marco. possibly possibly but don't remind me that uh, could happen hopefully not I have a minor in pharmacy uh, studies so that's a backup okay cool that's good man backups are always good safety net is always good in some colleges in Germany you can still get uh, 
practically free education even as a non-EU citizen really Cuba offers that uh, doctor's degrees Cuba uh, offers training for as long as you you're willing to serve for free for like five years for room and board and stuff I think it's around something like that you'd have to prove you have the funds to sustain yourself with living expenses for the duration of your studies but there's only like 150 euros or so it may cost for the college per semester oh that's cool the current economic system will die in like 10 years crypto will take over not bitcoin but better opportunities uh we're in some serious disruptive innovation taking place i don't know if crypto will take it over i don't think it's well i can't say let me put it this way i think 10 years is too early uh for that prediction to happen but i think we're in the transition of different things happening uh, one of the problems with all this is digitizing everything and making cashless societies because no matter how secure you think you might be through cryptos as long as you're going through nodes you can be tracked and it could be you lose your anonymity okay so we have to make sure that we still maintain cash within our societies because physical cash is the one true uh one true anonymous form of conducting trade currency money it's the one system that provides you perfect anonymity what pisses me off is that this system is made in such a way that if you're already super super rich banks you have the uh, almost zero risk uh, managing other people's money because they're kind of forced to give you their money uh, with which you your pay and make money out of it and take the loans for you from which you also make money out of just time passing by agreed and don't forget that banking institutions can get money at zero interest rate so they're being given free money they're given being given the opportunity to create money out of thin air so it's not that they're just taking people's money and charging interest by loaning pe other people's money they're creating money out of thin air right actually i guess the most mathematical thing in my degree is the statistics analysis and price uh pricey statistics is huge statistics is in so many different fields right although the computer software does that all for me so it's good i I bet you could do it without the software though right Chicho? Uh, to a certain degree some of the stuff yes uh, a lot of the statistics the reason a lot of statistics has been rolling out within our societies is because of computing power right statistics was powerful in the past and you did a lot of stuff by hand or you had computers you ran you know programs in the background to process the data and stuff like this but because computing power has become so powerful right processing has become so powerful now we're able to do way more intricate statistical analysis than we could have done in the past so statistics is a huge part of our world right now so there's a lot of statistics that you couldn't do by hand but it's important to know what the what the ratios what the variables what the analysis tells you and for that or what the numbers tell you and what the what the percentages tell you and for that you have to have a pre a good understanding of what the process is one of the problems with st statistics is people punch in the numbers right they press a button process it spits out something and they're not aware that there's a flaw in the data right so it's good to have the background crypto is just so much more efficient yeah i may be too early uh, they will milk it as long as they can they will milk it as long as they can 100 uh, percent but as as far as effectiveness goes it takes a lot of energy to solve those mathematical problems for the blockchains to be processed right so it's not necessarily the most energy efficient way to do things uh, i don't get how it it, it still works this way and people don't make a revaluation about it is this uh, crypto i'm assuming 
I plan to go to uh, go back to school in 2021 for an MD in Im immuno immunology. It is a massive money maker in the U.S. because of our elevated uh, allergen sensitivity, and according to my uh, immunologist, interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of allergies in the Western world in Canada, United States, right? You man and the people who are involved are the true scholars of the nowadays. <laughs> this is the vodka drinker. <laughs> Booker. It will take another 17,000 K and three more years, but it's worth it. Okay, cool. I struggle. I struggle mostly with uh, selecting the analysis to use e exactly pricey that's one of the core things which model because statistical analysis when you're pressing that button you're running a model over the data so you might be losing a lot of data when you're running the models right so you have to have a really good understanding of when the models apply and in which situations the models apply and if they apply to your data set before you can run it right uh, da -da -da. and as to use them i always have to google flowcharts to pick which test to run yeah crypto is dangerous because it takes more power from the government uh, it gives more power to the government I'm pretty sure we will get even closer to pure capitalism yeah we'll get closer to centralization uh, so it, we have to make sure it is decentralized should we do a long division let's do a long division of a polynomial because that's one thing we said we we're going to do right I caught up with the chat so let's do a long division let's say we're doing this negative 2 x cubed uh, let's make it to the power of 5 here let's write it out because that way we're going to use up the whole thing standing crypto is down there. so check this out what if we said x plus 1 and negative 3 x to the power of 5 plus 2 x to the power of 3 plus to x squared minus x plus one okay let's say we want to divide this by this and if it goes down message kill yourself oh da, 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 da. sorry buddy i am going to time out this guy Boop. 600 seconds we're gonna do it again <laughs> I might do it again I'm gonna do it again Die out. another 600 seconds so for 12 minutes uh, ballast ballast ballet ballast okay uh, we had this thing NPS man do your thing okay Automod grabbed it because that statement that you said, not cool. So we timed you up, brother. Okay. Uh, sometimes I'm harsh, sometimes I'm not. Right now I'm not harsh. Sometimes it just goes straight up bad, man. Okay. Get some Twitch mods. Yeah. Yes. My basic understanding uh, is the more powerful the currency, the more uh, morality it can purchase. <laughs> Crazy. So take a look at this, right? So you ask yourself, what do you multiply x by to give you negative 3x to the power of 5, right? Well, we multiply this by negative 3x to the power of 4 because we already got 1x there, okay? So this times this and this. So whatever we put up here is going to multiply both of those, okay? So that, negative 3x to the power of 4 times x is negative 3x to the power of 5. Negative 3x to the power of 4 times 1 is negative 3x to the power of 4, right? maths i know there are some big tricks with polynomial operations but i forget everything we're gonna go over it you'll see right so negative three x to the power of four right so again we're subtracting this from this so what we're gonna do is i'm just gonna multiply this by negative one and add that it's the same thing as subtraction which basically means just change the signs and add them right so whenever there are minuses i just make them pluses and Adam okay You're the best guy to introduce me with math. <laughs> nice do you know how to break down infinity to a half it's it's infinity I don't know if that makes sense 
but it's worth a shot uh, infinity broken down divided by two is infinity okay infinity divided by a gazillion is infinity okay it's now 2 a.m. for me good night good night pricey good night okay so if we add these guys that guy kills that now take a look at this that's 2 x to the power of 3 that's 3 x to the power of 4 we can't add them right so what you do is you write down the x to the power of 4 first basically the way it works is think of this as a zero spot for x to the power of 4 reserving the spot and that's the way you should think about it you're going down sequentially right okay so <laughs> sweet dreams brother so you can't add that down so you just write this here 3x to the power of 4 and then you bring everything down I usually bring everything down they tell you don't have to I do because I don't want my eye scanning all the way to the top when I'm doing something wrong so this becomes plus 2x cubed plus 2x squared minus x plus 1 and then you ask yourself again what do you multiply x by to give you 3x to the power of 4 well you multiply it by 3x to the power of 3 so plus 3x to the power of 3 this multiplies this and this so this becomes 3x to the power of 4 plus 3x to the power of 3 change the signs and add them this kills this this becomes negative x cubed bring everything down plus 2x squared minus x plus 1 right what do you multiply x by to give you negative x cubed you multiply it by negative x squared okay minus x squared that multiplies this and this so it becomes negative x cubed minus x squared change the signs and add them right this kills this add those guys you get 3x squared plus x sorry not plus x minus x plus 1 what do you multiply x by to give you 3x squared you multiply it by 3x so plus 3x that multiplies this and this and you put it down there 3x times x is 3x squared 3x times 1 is plus 3x change the signs and add them that kills that that becomes negative 2x plus 1 what do you multiply x by to give you negative 2x you multiply it by negative 2 right so that becomes negative 2 negative 2 times x is negative 2x negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 change the signs and add them that kills that and that becomes 3 you have no more x's left x doesn't go into 3 you're done okay so if you're going to write a statement this oh sorry this divided by this so i'm going to write it here really small okay negative 3x to the power of 5 plus 2x cubed plus 2x squared minus x plus 1 divided by x plus 1 is equal to that guy right negative 3x to the power of 4 plus 3x cubed minus x squared plus 3x minus 2 plus 3 divided by that plus 3 over x plus 1 okay that's one way you could write it now there's another thing you could do so the answer for the world is three the answer for the world it used to be two but because we're the world's a little chaotic now it's three right i used to tell people always the answer is always two right okay but how is it easier expression check this out we got this guy here right just imagine we have this guy 27 divided by 2 was equal to 13 plus 1 over 2 right get rid of your denominators multiply the whole expression by 2 so 27 over 2 is 27 is equal to 13 times 2 let's write down 13 times 2 plus 1 over 2 the 2 kills each other so plus 1 so you just came up with an expression where you said 27 is equal to 13 times 2 plus 1 we could do the same thing here multiply this whole equation right because it's this thing is equal to this thing by x plus 1 so what you're doing now is you're going to break down this thing and rewrite it in a different form so if you multiply this whole thing by x plus 1 
x plus 1 times this just kills that. It's just that guy. So it's negative 3x to the power of 5 plus 2 x cubed plus 2 x squared minus x plus 1 is equal to this guy times that plus 3. Negative 3x to the power of 4 plus 3x cubed minus x squared plus 3x minus 2 times x plus 1 plus 3. And it's all one sentence, right? So this guy, this is equal to that. And what that does, you basically took a function like this and broke it down further, right? It's like taking H2O, H2O, and saying H2O is equal to two H's plus an oxygen. Okay. It's got two hydrogens and an oxygen. I don't know if that's the proper chemical way to write that, right? But when you're balancing equations, that is exactly what you do. Okay, this makes sense, but I'm just drunk. <laughs> Sometimes that's what it takes, brother. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. Super cool, super cool, right? You break things down. What, what have we as human beings tried to do since the beginning of time, that our time, I guess, since we acquired consciousness, We've tried to figure out how things work. And what that means is break things down and see what their core building blocks are. The core building block of this function, of this function is to this level that we've taken it, one step broken down is this guy times this guy plus that guy. That's all it is, right? This is that times that plus three. 27 is 13 times 2 plus 1 makes big problems into smaller problems exactly exactly it allows us to analyze systems and figure out what makes them work and if we want right for example if this represented a type of system and we were really interested in the x plus 1 part of it we can take the x plus one, whatever it might be, and mix it with another function and create something brand new, right? Smaller problems, yeah. Math gives us a framework to understand things, 100%. Watching the stream is jogging my memory. I'm remembering all the algebra I learned three to four years ago. It hurts. Ah, it's like working out, man. You go to the gym, ah, lift weights and stuff like it hurts. If you do it right, you're sore the next day, but it's good for you. Very good for you, right? Fun. That's a couple of hours, brothers, sisters, friends, twitchers, chatters. Fun. Thanks for being here, gang. Slowly, slowly, we start, uh, I think, maybe, hopefully, uh, start getting people uh coming in more and we'll talk like this stream we talked a lot of mathematics which is fantastic uh, a couple of streams ago we did math and we talked mainly about politics economics or something like this right um but I, i'm assuming the next couple of months we're going to start talking more and more about mathematics because the end of the school year is coming up right so uh just putting this out there again if you know anyone that needs math help uh, pass on the word they're welcome to come to the streams. We're going to try to do these streams uh, at least, well, which we're going to try to do these streams at least three times a month. So until the end of the school year, we're in May, until the end of June, we'll try to do at least six more of these in the next couple of months. And keep an eye out for, for the announcements. And uh, if you know people that need help, tell them to come this way, right? I'll definitely try to teach as much as I can, help you guys as much as you can, as much as I can. And thank you for being here, by the way, everyone. Uh, I prefer that than games, actually. It's uh, games is fun, right? But you can't just play games for your whole life. That's not what the essence of existence is. Games is part of it, right? Thanks for giving us the time, man. My pleasure, man. Thank you for being here. I hope you don't have a hangover. <laughs> this was excellent. <laughs> Glad you enjoyed. Glad you enjoyed game. Uh, thanks for being here. And if you want to talk current events, politics, economics, technology, whatever it might be, 
tomorrow morning 8 a.m my time okay pst pacific time uh, we're gonna do that stream bye for now